Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellisted. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. In this tutorial, I just wanted to show you how to build a quick and easy custom drum rack inside of Live. And it's really a, quite a simple process. So to get started, we're just going to start with an empty drum rack. We go ahead and grab that. And we just want to drag that into our main window. And so when we bring an empty rack in here, we can see these slots. And these slots correlate to the keyboard notes to which we're going to assign the samples or loops or what have you. And we can move up and down by octave by either scrolling with our mouse or using the up and down arrows on our keyboard. If we want to go up or down by a single row, we can just hold down command and either again use the up and down key keys or we can use our mouse plus command. And we'll see that we can select any one of these and we can either browse for a sample, which we can come into our Ableton drums library and grab, say, a clap. If we like it, we can double click to bring that in. If we want to kill that, we can just click delete on that. And so we can browse from within a particular cell if we want to map like that. If we have this turned on, it will auto select by MIDI. If we hit a note on the keyboard, it'll switch to that pad. So we can actually play the note on the keyboard where we want something to go, and then it'll automatically move us to that particular pad so we can load something. And again, we just click right there, and this will take us into whatever it is we want to load. We can also just come in and say, go to a kick, and we can drag it in just like that. And once we're in there, we have some, some tone shaping, some fade in. We can adjust the length of the sample, etc., and do some basic manipulation in there. We can also, if we want, we can come over to Classic. We can look at the, the polyphony or the number of voices. That doesn't matter as much for one shot, so that it matters for loops and such, because that just means how many times this sample can be playing concurrently. So if you have it set to polyphony of one, every time you hit that key, it'll restart that loop or that sample, no matter how fast I hit it. Again, that doesn't really matter as much for individual samples, but when we work with loops, it, it very much does. And now we can see that because I've loaded a sample there, this is lit up a little more. And I'm just going to scroll down to that. If I want to add my own stuff, I can come over to my user library, um, stuff from the current project, or I can add, say, I have a folder of one shots here. I've got some collections. I can even click add folder to add a particular sample folder collection or catalog that we have. And so, for example, I'll come in here and I have a collection of, of different parts and one shots. And we're going to go ahead and just find, find a kick or two that we like. And I'm going to actually shift select, we'll say these three. And now I can drag all three and they're going to come in right next to that. And if I turn off the auto select, now we can see that while I'm seeing a play trigger here, I'm not switching between the pads to, to adjust. We'll turn that back on. And again, we can come in and manipulate it. If it's a loop, we can also do slicing in here and adjust all types of parameters. So let's say we were happy with those kicks, and now we can come down and maybe find some snares. And we'll go ahead and we'll drag a row of four of those as well. And those just map to E through G in the same octave. We can build up all kinds of interesting things, uh, kits, not just using drum parts, but we can also say, bring in loops. And one cool thing about loops is if we have it, it's going to come in on warp mode, and that means it's going to conform it to the session tempo. And if I wanted to slide or shorten that, very simple. all kinds of loop manipulation that way. And if we take it off of warp, it's going to be in the original tempo. So depending on how that sample or loop is set up, we might want to warp it or not warp it. Generally, we want to set our project tempo to where it is and let it conform that way. And so we can continue just building a, a kit with, uh, with loops, with samples. Uh, with all kinds of interesting ideas. If you have an entire range that you want to bring in, we can just select them like that, pick a different octave, and drag them in. 
and now we've grabbed an entire section. Maybe it's from a folder or a catalog. It's a real quick way to bring all kinds of samples in and build something up. Once we have that built up, as we add different slots in here, now I can see again I have different colors uh, showing me that I've got samples loaded in these slots. And I can come up in here. And if we want to do any other audio processing, we can either work from it from inside the drum rack slot, or we can come up here and we can expand and manipulate sounds individually on each individual channel. So we have a couple of ways of looking at our drum rack. There we go. We've built a, uh, a basic uh, custom drum rack. If we like what we've got, we can just click Save, and it'll go into our user library, and we'll call this Live Drum Rack Demo. And there we go. We can call that up at any time. So building your own custom kits and working with them, really simple to do. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment on the video page. And in some later videos, I'll look at more detailed shaping of tones, working with loops, et cetera, inside of the sampler and the drum rack. All right, thanks a lot. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel. I'm Stephen Ellistead. Have a great day.